Oh, is it the best bass sound? Is it the fattest bass sound? Is it the bassiest bass sound? Absolute beauty. I'm about to do something mental, unthinkable. I'm about to throw away all my tools. Or are they tools? Are they crutches, sonic crutches? I started this process over a year ago when I changed my orchestral palette, got rid of the old, started working on the new. And um, I thought I'd go the whole hog, which makes me nervous, but also really excited. What brought this about? Well, I bought a brand spanking new MacBook Pro. And I thought to myself, do I really want to do that thing that I do every three or four years? Connect the new computer to the old and port over all of that broken code, all of that fluff, lint. What if I were just to start from scratch? Because all of those old computers porting all of that crap over, it feels like I don't know, it feels like a teenager's bedroom that needs clearing out. What if I were to move out of that bedroom that my my parents have turned into a, a, a gym and finally get a bachelor pad of my own, have it all laid out just as I want it, but a bachelor pad of the computing, the, the sonic variety. What if I could analyze my last nearly three decades of working as a professional and go, what if? What if I could define all of those wonderful sounds that I've collected over the years, but redo them and redo them just right? A true purge. And during this basement purge of my room of shame, I found this. Oh, it just brings back memories. I have stared at this. This thing has gone around the world with me. I used to tour with Peter Andre with this thing. And when it came out, it was just like, it was absolutely the bee's knees. It wasn't cheap either. I was thinking, I think it was a couple of grand. Uh, I think you can pick these up for now, two, 300 quid. And it was huge, that and the, the Nord. Uh, they really broke the mold with um, dance music at the time, so. That for me, oh, it fills me with horror. It takes me back to the days of loading up a queue and having this thing rigged to my computer and it firing off the wrong program change and it just switching back to chariots. I reckon this would be a good starting point. The most perfect bass sound for media composition. Is it the best bass sound? No. Is it the fattest bass sound? No. Is it the bassiest bass sound? No. But it's the one that got the most cues away whenever I wasn't working with a bass guitarist. Single mode patch one. There she is. Oh. Oh. oh, is it euphoric recall? There's just enough upper harmonics for it to carry through on different kinds of speakers, which is why this is the bass that I used on Top Gear and countless other, certainly in my fac end years, anything that didn't have a bass guitar, this was what I used. So let's go down an octave. What I quite like about it is it, is it behaves like a bass guitar that really below C, it's not much use to anyone. Now I wanted to start with this because it, it's going to be relatively easy to sample because it doesn't loop and looping synths is, is a bit of a nightmare. There's several different waveforms, I'm just going to have a listen to interesting. Now. You can hear this little thlump, flump, and basically I think that there's a filter envelope on it. So that's what they're doing. Just giving it a little bit of attack. So that gives me a little bit more kind of subtones down there. So I think the way to sample this is to actually 
uh, have the filter not die off and then recreate that filter envelope in the sampler. Let's listen to the other waveforms, see if they're going to be worth taking. So I'm just going to take, which is a sawtooth, and this is more of a sine triangle. Great. Never going to use it as a lead, so I'm never going to go up there, but I just think it will be useful to go from the low G to there, so I don't feel restricted. And I'm going to go chromatically. I don't need to do round robins or anything like that. These are digital oscillators. I want a nice, clean, pure signal. And we have found these mix pre's by sound devices give us just that. This is We've got about four of these things that we use for all of our more cleaner, purer signal paths at Crow Hill. Now, I've got loads of stuff that could filth this up, but that's something for another day. I wanna just get it in and get it sampled and then pack this away as a family heirloom of little value compared to what I paid for it. Can't believe that I stood at Wembley Arena playing Mysterious Girl on this thing. Wow, those are the days. Okay, so we're in record already because I'm recording this. Um, let's go. Right, and now with the next waveform. Okay, so what I want to do is just pull out the SD card from this, get it into the computer, the new fresh Mac, and see if I cannot replicate the response of this filter, but also the feel of the monophonic legato. So, cheeky little logic tip. Strip silence. I see a lot of people online cutting samples using this. Don't do that. It's a very, very crude tool. But basically, it just strips out your silences. If you do a nice pre-delay, it'll give you a little bit of silence before the notes. And then I use this cut to transient hot key like this, which again, still isn't perfect, but gets you very, very close to where you need to be. Then we're gonna do some basic mathematics here. I'm going to give this an entire bar at 120 BPM, which will mean that we have a minus offset that we'll need to compensate for of 96,000 samples working at 48K. I'm going to create just some fades, just in case there is any like ground tone or hum or anything like that, just to fade it off, export all of those. And then the next step is uh, to title stuff. You can automate so much of the process with a well-titled deck of samples. And I use this thing called Name Mangler. Uh, it's kind of quite a pricey uh, application. There are cheaper ones out there. So I'm gonna start with the saw wave, drag these all in. So what we're gonna do is just tidy this up a bit. And the simplest way of doing that is just to do a sequence. Let's get rid of that. Let's do a suffix JP. Eight, one, two, two. Base, saw, base. We don't want to start it from one. We, in fact, want to start it from G, two, three, four, with middle C being C4. Now, because I've just put logic in, I don't have my preferences in yet. So I know one of the first things to do is to look at view and to change it from Yamaha to Roland. So if you're in Yamaha, middle C is C3, Roland C4. I have made a new blag sheet about the history of MIDI. Uh, which I'll show you in a sec, uh, check out why there is this difference, which causes all sorts of problems. If you've ever got a sample instrument up and it feels like an octave low or an octave high, it'll be because the technicians who have made the sample instrument have got the C4s and the C3s mixed up. So if we're starting from this G here, that's G2, and that's the C below middle C there. So that's G2. And then let's look at this blag sheet. And uh, there's a reason I made this, was just to have a quick reference. Go to resources, click there, MIDI. Let's just have a quick look at this. Right, so we've got our MIDI numbers here and we are in a Roland mode where middle C is C4. We want to start on G2, two, three, four, two, which is MIDI note 43. 
So it's starting from 43 all the way up to there. So rename 37 files, rename. I've got an instance of contact. I'm going to double click. And I am actually going to be doing a, a starting from scratch video where I really do start from scratch and take you through the absolute fundamentals of all the different stuff that we do, sampling, uh, using a door, what, what digital sound is, all of that kind of stuff over the forthcoming months. Here's a few basics. So mapping editor, group editor, wave editor. I'm just going to have the, the one group because all we've got is a chromatic thing. And then you'll see here, I'm going to purposely just stick that any old where, like that. And if we just select all of those, we have an auto map function, auto map setup. And so we're going to ignore saw base, but what we want to do is to make this the root key, apply. Then we want to make it the low key, apply, and the high key apply and then hopefully there we are all starting around there and this is a demonstration of why things get confusing because contact also uses Yamaha so this actually says G1 as opposed to G2 but what we want to be sure about is this position is G1 so we can see it's going from G1 to G1 and the root key is G1 and hopefully if we hit that there We shall hear it. Then what we need to do is adjust our start point. So if you recall, we're working with an offset of 96,000 samples. So I'm going to change the sample start time to 9,600,000. There we go. And you'll see there that we have that all snipped now. But the nice thing of having that pre-delay is we have all sorts of stuff to mess around with. And what you'll find is a lot of instruments actually start before the note and they'll sound more realistic the further back before the note you go. But when you play them, they'll sound kind of spongy. This is going to be bitey. You can hear that click. And that's because we're actually chopping just before the very start. This should get rid of that click. So what I'm going to do is use this offset, which is just shy of 96,000 samples for the rest of them. So let's make sure we end on that one. And there's this little cog to all selected zones, copy current sample start settings. So great, now this doesn't sound like uh, the bass that I was playing. So what we now need to do is to apply and copy that filter that the JP had. So what I'm going to do is at the group level is insert a filter and I believe these ladders are copying the Moog filter. So let's start with that, see how that sounds. Now what I want to do is to control that cutoff. The thing to understand with the, uh, the, the kind of modular pathway of contact is it's not behaving like the modular pathway of uh, a, an audio track. It's all to do with individual samples and how it deals with each individual sample. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an envelope. And if we go down to the bottom here, that's where that envelope is for, where are you, cut off. And if we make it so it goes down to... And then we want to take the delay really short. really does feel like great okay so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to do a save as tribase 
and I'm just going to load in just a different set of samples into this using the same process. What's my app set up? Okay, make root key, apply, make set to single key. Does that work? Yeah, works just as well. And then we were going to do, oh, it was, it was just prior to 96,000. So let's just go, same process. Oh, this is the one. So sample start, 96, 1, 2, 3. Again, we got that little clickety click. Oh, it doesn't like that. So again, just shy of 9600. Still feels tight. Absolute beauty. So check out the link down below, which will take you to our new resources hub. Um, where you'll be able to download that stuff. Now, once I'm happy with the presentation of this kind of origins library, I'm going to put it up on pianobook.co.uk, which is our partner company. I have some news about that coming very soon. So do subscribe. And I cannot tell you how important I think it is that you join the mailing list. If you don't, you're going to miss out on something truly wonderful in the spirit of what we've been talking about today. So um, one of those, always much appreciated. Do subscribe and see you very soon.